Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Today I am stitching out, um, hopefully it'll be okay and work well because this is the first run, um, the Hip Hugger. Um, I don't want to call it a fanny pack. Fanny is a, um, an offensive word in other countries, but this is a Hip Hugger pack. Hopefully it should fit the largest um, iPhone. Um, and right now I'm doing a six by 10. It'll be, it'll come in a five by seven, a six by 10 and an eight by 12. A uh, five by seven will be really small, but I thought it'd be adorable as you can make a matching mommy and me hip pouch for your child. So this one's called the hip hugger. Um, what I've already done now is stitched out the, um, general outline. Um, I try to do that when I can, on, especially on my newer bags, because it just helps you spatially center your material. Um, without having to add a lot of registration marks, which is um, cumbersome. We have our zipper line, as always. We're gonna line up the middle of our zipper with this center zipper line. And I am using a number five zipper. I think it should work, we're gonna find out. So a number five zipper is, let me find some zipper tape here. This is a number three zipper. Make sure I can get you guys or in my view, you are. And you can see how much the difference is. It's about a quarter of an inch wider. So that's why you can't assume to use a number five in any in the hoop pattern unless the person says so. Now, generally the center um, teeth are wider as well, but on this one, because this is a special faux metallic, it actually ends up being the same. But most of the regular standard um, zippers, let me see if I have one down here. Here we go. They're, um, the zipper teeth are slightly less wide. Hopefully you can see that. Slightly less wide than um, the number five. So this is what you will find in most patterns call for the standard number three zipper. So you can't assume a number five will work. I'm gonna test it here and we're gonna find out. So the fanny pack is gonna be hanging on my hip. Um, so, sorry, I said fanny pack again. Um, I'm, I'm just cutting it close because I happen to have this 10 inch zipper. It should be enough. You really want one inch free on either side because you do not want any of these metal gobbly glooks to get into your stitch path. So I'm using um, this number five and I'm gonna have it, I kind of feel like it should zip from the other direction because if it's hanging, I'm right-handed and if I'm hanging on me, I'm gonna zip from my center out to my side, but then if you have it on the other side of you, I'm gonna just leave it on the traditional side, but you figure that out how you wanna work it. Um, also we have, what is this piece of vinyl for? I don't know. Okay, so uh, here's the, the pieces that we're using. So we have our zipper and then we have three pieces exterior three pieces lining and this time I'm hoping this is gonna work we're gonna try these little um, doodads now the important thing to note about these is um, they're much he thicker and heavier taller and this is with it the receiving end on it Ooh, that just flung across the room so it, it's a little bit better when it's not so you need to make sure you have plenty of clearance in here and um, so I made these I didn't even measure, I'm sorry. And you might need to make them longer for your machine. So I made them, um, I cut them at just about three and a half inches and then folded it in half. Now I went ahead and stitched this on my regular sewing machine upstairs um, just to hold it because I hate when the things spin around, but you don't have to do that. Um, you could actually put a piece of double stick tape in there one thing you want to do, I'll do it right now while I'm thinking of it, is take, this is um, pro, propylene, propylene, however you say it, um, webbing, it's not cotton. So you want to leave it a little long and you want to burn these edges with a lighter. And that helps it, um, when you burn them, it helps them from fraying. So just burn the edges. And since I have it together, hopefully they burn together. Since I have them placed so far together, Hopefully it'll burn together, melt together. That one didn't, the first one I think did. So I'm gonna flip, flip it around this side and just burn it off and that'll help keep it. 
because what happens is these will tend to come out of the bag. So I'm going to guesstimate when I place this, and I'll tell you more when we get there, I'm gonna guesstimate how much my presser foot's gonna need so I can have a little bit over. So I'd recommend that you actually cut these at four inches just in case your presser foot's wider. Let me make sure this doesn't fling across the room. Alternatively, these are one inch straps and one inch hardware or plasticware. Alternatively, you could use D-rings and there's no reason not to use a regular D-ring strap and then just hook, make your crossbody strap and just wrap it around your waist. That's fine too. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. So we have our two pieces for our interior lining and I was gonna use a different material, um, but it's so hard for you to see the right and wrong side when I use a solid. And then this will be the main lining. And then likewise, we have three pieces for the, the exterior, um, top, bottom, back. And I'm gonna try a slip pocket in here. I don't know if my machine will get through this all, this vinyl, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna put it on the front. You can put a slip pocket on the back if you prefer. So then you would want to make the width, the same width as your um, bag. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. But the challenge is um, when I stitch this out, I'm gonna add these little wings here and the back though will be one long piece. So your pocket could potentially get the wing part. If you take it all the way here across, then you're gonna have little pieces that could get in the wing. The, the solution to that would be if you have a regular sewing machine, it's just go up, up, go to your sewing machine. I always say upstairs, mine's upstairs. And just very carefully um, stitch through the top stitching that's gonna be here. That's the solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and si stitch my zipper down. And what I like to do is I start at one end and I tape the long piece down. I center it over here as best as I can. And I'm gonna kinda cut this out so that the center foot can get past that little hard stop. I'm sorry, the presser foot. But I wanna leave that hard stop in there just to give me a little bit more security. So I'm not gonna cut that off when the bag's done. I'm gonna trim this piece and leave the hard stop in there. So now you can see, um, I do have enough room for my thing, or my hole to be out of the way. So now you can see what I mean um, by centering the zipper. So what I like to do is I like to um, hopefully this will focus. See the center line that you see behind the teeth? Just walk this down and line that right up over your zipper, um, zipper middle line. And then I like to do the right side first. And then I tape it down. I would, I used to alternate, but I've actually found that if I do one side first and get it nice and then go back and do the other side, I get a much less wrinkly zipper. I use a lot of tape. As I've always said, this is the make or break part of your bag. If you don't line this up well, the reveal of your zipper is not gonna match and it's gonna look really bad. And you don't want that. You wanna make your bags look as professional as you possibly can. And quite frankly, that's kind of hard to do with in the hoop bags because they're flat and most of the time, there are ways you can make them non-flat, but they're just not, they don't look the same as when you buy, make it on a regular sewing machine, usually. Now you could get my flat bottom girl, which has a structured flat bottom, and that one looks almost the same as if you did on a sewing machine. It's the same exact concept as if you did on a sewing machine, in fact. Okay. So now I got it zipped down. I try to keep it on close to the edge as I can. And I'm gonna put another piece. I don't know why I'm using this quarter inch or this half inch tape. I normally use the um, one inch tape for this, but I don't know where I put it. Okay, so now I have this zipped down. This is looking a little wonky there, but I'm gonna go with it. Okay, so now you wanna, I'm, I'm gonna be holding this up a lot because I'm not doing pictures for the PDF. So I'm actually gonna take stills from the video to do the PDF because this is actually just a standard bag. This is a standard on the hoop um, three piece bag. So it's not anything to be scared of. The structure is the same. The only thing difference is the shape and the hardware we're using.
Now I have to be careful when I start to add my hardware with my Janome, I sometimes have to lift the presser foot in the back higher. I meant to change my needle. I'm gonna wing it. I think I need my needle changed. Now, one thing I wanna note, there are gonna be places when you're being told to line up with the top of the zipper. Um, if you did not cut your fabric generously, what I mean is the, the um, zipper placement lines that we stitched out first, this one, and this one is where we're gonna be lining things up because that's gonna give us our seam allowance. But I think I cut mine generously enough, I can go ahead and just line it up with the top and bottom of the zipper. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move these um, small pieces on the side. I don't need those anymore. I'm gonna set them down here though, and hopefully I can reuse them. Usually they remain enough tackiness to reuse a few times if you did not cut into them. This is transport tape. I get it on Amazon. It's from, um, is it 3M? Whoever does the medical tape. This is medical grade tape. And I'm using the one half inch strips, but I usually use the one inch strip as well. Okay, and you can actually remove this one down here because sometimes I forget to do that, so remove it now. All right, so now we have our zipper place. Now we're gonna go and turn our hoop to the back and we're gonna put our first piece of lining um, and I have labeled the lining, the pieces for you in the PDF to make it a little bit clearer. If this is your first time doing a bag, go ahead and get sticky notes and um, mark your notes. Um, I'm using this really pretty tulip pink. I know it's kind of a waste on the lining, but I wanted you guys to be able to see the difference. If you're using a directional print, whether it's on the exterior, or the, um, the exterior or the interior, um, here's our bottom of our zipper. Always think top and bottom. Don't think left and right. Don't think of your hoop orientation. Think of your bag orientation. So this one here is going this way, directional. So if you lay it here and then just flip it over, it'll be in the right direction. Now, you'll notice that our zipper doesn't go, and I did cut this really close. So I might add a half inch to all my cutting directions. The zipper doesn't um, extend all the way to the extreme. So make sure you're centering it based on the flange. This is going to be the exterior of your bag. And now's the time when we can get in here and get those little pieces of tape we had. This is such a long expanse that I like to put a piece of tape on either end and on the center. Now, depending on your hoop arrangement, you may need to fold this back and tape it down so it doesn't interfere with your hoop attachment. And mine, I actually um, save all the files in this orientation because the Janome, as far as I'm aware, is the only silly machine that um, will not allow you to rotate it. So I take the guesswork out for my customers and rotate it for the Janome. Most of the other machines will allow you to rotate it. So we're using this really pretty origami illusions from My Punk Broidery. And this is why I'm worried about the thickness. This is actually kind of a thick um, vinyl. I am going to be listing this pattern uh, both lined and unlined because some of these vinyls are hefty enough like this one on its own that um, you don't really need a lining on it. Um, the raw edges are nice and clean. It doesn't fray. Um, so you could get away with no lining on it if you want to reduce bulk. But it's easier to explain those it's ex easier to explain not to add the lining in a PDF than it is to not. And here's another one. I'm gonna be testing this next. This is the radish marine vinyl and you see how that woven kind of material. This is another one that would be fine to be raw edged inside. It's not gonna fray. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on and we're gonna run a tack down stitch. And I just on, did my needle. Yes, just a little bit. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Sorry for that interjection. The sun needed something. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. And this is where the the width of the um the width of the zipper makes a difference. Let me see if I can zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, where are my hands at? Okay, yeah, you can see it uh, a little bit more. Hold on, let me turn you a little bit. Okay, so. Okay, down here. 
So right here is the zipper. Oh, let me just get you under the needle. Yes, that's there. See the, the presser foot? So if I push this needle down manually, you see the teeth? You can't really see the bump there, but I can feel it. You can feel that bump. This is my tack down. So you need to make sure that that needle is not going to run into those teeth because if it does, that's a bad thing. And you need to have a tiny bit of room, like a 1 16th inch away from those teeth for your pole to engage and work. So that's why I say you cannot assume that, I'm going to zoom back out, you cannot assume to use a five number five need zipper with any in the hoop bag. Okay, let me get this back up here because I will probably get an error message if I don't. So now we're going to go ahead and tack this down. And that's tacked it down on the front and the back. So we're going to go ahead and flip over. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of hard because it's dark. Flip this over, remove our tape, and we're gonna top stitch the lining too. You don't have to top stitch the lining, but it does help keep it down a little bit better. Now, um, on the traditional um, bags where, I shouldn't say traditional, but the newest, I almost all the digitizers are making them. Um, I like to call it a full, <laughs> a faux top zipper. The zipper is at the top, but it doesn't open along the top. It's just at the top of the bag. Um, a lot of times we don't top stitch the the other piece of the lining. I'm um, sorry, the dog is going crazy because the kid's outside without her. Shh, he'll be back in, in a minute. There he is. Please get the dog. So what you can do, I mentioned this in a video a long time ago, and I noticed that another digitizer has started to do it. What you can do is um, put a piece of double stick tape on the inside of the bag behind that lining and it will help hold that lining down better and i'll show you that when we get to it um on this bag what i mean even though we're not doing a double stick um actually i have a bag right here that has it so this is a double zipper pouch and i'll show you what i mean um since we don't top stitch this lining sometimes depending on the stitch it might encroach on your zipper so what you can do is behind this on the inside, put a piece of double stick tape. And when you turn the bag out, reach up and pull that out and then smooth it down and it'll help hold the lining down. I don't do that because I haven't had any issues with mine. Um, I've not had any issues with the way my alignments are with the that happening. Okay, so we're gonna fold this down and this is kind of a wefty, um, vinyl so it's going to take a lot of tape to hold it down but we want to try and finger crease this seam and i lost my um boning tool oh here it is so holding this hoop at a against a flat surface you can use a boning tool to go ahead and help crease this down um alternatively just like i was mentioning there you could put some double stick tape here and that'll help hold this down as well um, just make sure that your needle can get through there. Um, I'm going to use, um, let me get my big tape out. I'm going to use the wider tape along the edges. I will tell you this transport tape can leave a residue on some of the vinyls. Um, in my experience, it's been the more shiny vinyls. So again, I'm going to do a, a slow-mo here so I can get this still for the can't for the PDF. So you're going to press this down. All along, but make sure you're holding your hoop against a solid surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the center and I'm gonna pull this really tautly. The goal is um, not to get your finger inside that stitch area to hold this down. And this is a 10 inch long expanse. So I'm gonna use a couple pieces along the bottom and then across, or across the top. And this vinyl is absolutely stunning. It's, I cannot speak highly enough of it. It, the, the colorings varies based on what you put next to it. It catches the light and sometimes it looks even like a mauve color. It's so amazing. I was, I was just so thrilled with it. 
and um, so far it's been very pliable with the bags. I'm leaving a, a nice, um, generous turning hole on this one. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do our top stitching. If you are not adding the pocket, um, after we do the top stitching is when you would want to add any additional embroidery to the bag. So um, I'll show you what to do then. And my machine doesn't like this bulk as much, so what happens is it actually kind of bumps on that bean stitch. I think I might actually bump that up to a four millimeter. It's not as much construction as it is decorative to help hold that down. So if you were gonna add additional embroidery, you would wanna go ahead and flip this over, turn, pull the lining out of the way, and then do your embroidery and put the lining back. Now, one thing I wanna note is I goofed up. I hooped, um, tear away, Grayson. I hooped tear away and I meant to hoop poly mesh. You really want poly mesh um, for this because it's gonna stay inside the bag. So don't use tear away. Um, you can use tear away if you need to, but get a, t a soft tear away. So now, just like we did down here, we're gonna lay our additional lining piece um, right side along the top of the, sim the zipper placement line, right here. And again, center it across the, the oh, I, somehow I cut this too long or too wide. Center it across the placement bags. Get your pieces of tape ready and tape it down. And again, we're gonna use a piece in the center. This is not a top stitch bag because I wanted the um, decoration. Okay, so now take your, um, I'm not calling out the, the piece names for these. So this is your top one, but sorry about that. I probably should be, um, but I don't have the, what I've named them all in front of me. So now we're gonna line this up with the top zipper line. In this case, we're just going to do the top of the zipper. It's fine. It gives us a little bit more of a seam allowance. And then we're going to tape it down on both sides. Now oh, I'm starting to get hungry. We've just been really winging it this long weekend and not really been focused on eating or anything. <laughs> just eating snacks as we get along the weekend. But that's fine. So again, like we did on the bottom, we're gonna do the tack down first, and then we're gonna flip it over and do the top stitching. So when you look at the pattern, um, there'll be a pattern that's called online, and you can't just use the same pattern um, the same design file for the online and the line because the ex the final stitch does not go all the way around the bag. So you'll have a, I'll show you when we get there, but we're going to have a, a stitch to hold the exterior panels together. And then we're going to add the lining, the final lining on the back. And then it's going to stitch around and leave an opening for the turning. So this bag will have a separate file for the online version. Okay. I just throw tape anywhere. Now we're gonna go ahead and finger press this carefully because it is sticking outside of the machine. Or I'm sorry, the hoop. We don't wanna um, unhoop our project. So um, before I add the final in here, I am gonna poke up and pull the tear away out of the way because at that point we'll be almost done. And if I remember, I don't want that tear away in the bag. So the stability we need from it will no longer be needed at that point. The top, it's probably okay, but for sure I don't want it on the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch this and then we're gonna do the same thing on the top. We're gonna fold this over, use our boning tool 
and you can see I didn't actually not do a very good job with lining up my zipper because it is a little bit off center here. So. But that's okay, I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm gonna pull the vinyl as far as I can, and that actually may be the issue. I don't know if I'm, it's as bad as I think it is. I think it's just I need to really pull that vinyl. I don't know where you guys are. Today is Martin Luther King Day. What a wonderful man he was. Um, world was a much better place with him around. And it's very cold here. We got that really drizzly, um, very dusty snow last night when it's just too cold to snow, but it wants to snow. So actually the reveal is not too bad after all. So the distance between here and here is what I mean by the reveal. And that's what I'm talking about. The more you, the better you line up your zipper on that first step. And I put a picture in the PDF showing you what's not a good look for it. The more you line it up the first step, the better it is in the long run. I tried a software that would allow me to pause in between um, doing these um, steps so you didn't have to watch the stitching, but it it didn't do a very good job. It was like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, one more thing to note, because the way we're doing the, the those little do doohickeys, um, oh, I messed up. I am so sorry. This is probably going to be an issue uh, because the this should have been at least a half an inch farther down because the tabs are going to do that. So I am going to have to cut that out real quick so my zipper does not hit it or my presser foot does not hit it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it is going to get um, stitched over. So I'm going to reach in here. I do not want my needle to hit that metal guide it's gonna it's fine because we're gonna um have stitching over this to close it but i wanted to keep the metal guide in there just for better security um but i should have layered it down so i really should have used i used a 10 inch zipper i really should have used a 12 inch zipper okay well i'm glad i realized that before i broke a needle okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um lay down our our tabs our placement for our little tabs, which I did not cut. Oh, but fortunately I actually have an extra piece that, that I brought down here with me and I didn't even realize it. So that worked out well. So um, at this point we wanna lay down our pocket if we're gonna use a pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and line the pocket up with this top stitch line. Let me cut this in half. Boy, did that work out well. I forgot the pieces for the tabs upstairs. So I think this is enough for it though. I somehow brought a little scrap piece down with me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay the slip pocket down. Now this is where it might get a little too thick and I'm kind of worried about it, so we'll find out. I do have a 9014 needle in here already. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim all these little pieces here. Now, we're only gonna have these, these tabs on the front. So before I do that, I wanna lay this down. And how far down do you want your pocket? Your slip pocket is up to you. You can have it all the way down here, or you can have it right all the way up here to the zipper. So you decide where you want it. I think I want mine to be about a half an inch under the top stitching. So I'm gonna put my ruler here on the top stitching and I'm gonna line this up and I wanna center it over these stitching here. It's gonna get caught in the um, tack downs for the wings. I like that. I think that'll be a nice little slip pocket to put my keys in. Like I said, if you prefer, you can do this on the back and 
after um, we add these steps down here. I'm gonna put the tape right there because I don't. If you don't put, if you don't tape down this piece, it's gonna um, actually the tape needs to come a little bit farther over. When the presser foot hits it, it's gonna push it up. So make sure you tape it down there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the right side placement. Oops, flip it around, Kimberly. And this tape, um, we can stitch through it. I've had no trouble stitching through it, and it comes out of the stitching just fine. No, I was afraid that was gonna happen. See what happened? I did it on purpose. I was afraid that was not taped down, so when the presser foot hit it, it um, bumped into it. So tape those edges down. And the clearance for my pocket is um, about a quarter inch on this side, so I think we're good, but I'm gonna add another, for your measurements, I'm gonna add a, another half inch to that, just to be safe. All right, so we can pull this piece out now too. And now we're gonna take our little pocket and or our tab And we're gonna lay it right on that line that I just stitched and tape it down. It's not gonna be centered here because the top is less wide than the bottom. And now we're gonna run the tack down. I'm doing one side at a time so you, get, you don't have to worry about going back and forth across the hoop. So it seems monotonous to do one at a time, but that's so we don't have to go back and forth across the hoop. And this is gonna be a tack down. And then we're gonna do a top stitch. Go ahead and fold this open and just like we did before we're going to fold it over and unlike where we did the heavy pressing here here we don't want to pull too hard if we pull too hard we're going to see our stitches so gingerly pull it open and tape it down we don't need to worry about it being so bulky here and i'm going to get another piece of tape because it's trying to lift up right here we don't want that oops there goes that roll of tape all right, now we're gonna do a top stitch and then we'll move over to the other side of the frame and do the, the little wing. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the placement line. And I should have mentioned this but um, at the beginning, but the color stops are there to make the move. Oops, uh, I almost forgot something. Ooh, glad I did it. The color stops are there to make sure that um, the machine stops for any action, any movement. I forgot to move the zipper pull. So you need to move the zipper pull before you do this one. Else you won't be able to. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this over about three quarters of the way over. And then um, since this is a large pull, just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down so it doesn't jingle and jaggle around while I'm working. But we're not gonna be stitching anywhere close to this again right now, so it should be fine. Okay, now what happens is if we don't tape this right here, it's gonna separate when the um, machine, when the foot goes over it, and that can be a problem it can break it apart so I'm gonna back up and redo this step I don't know why it didn't take me back to the beginning oh because I stopped it Okay, 
now we're gonna go ahead and put our next wing down. I'm gonna remove this tape first. Very carefully, I don't wanna pull those st stitches out. They're just placement stitches, but still, it'll be hard to know where to put our piece of vinyl if we don't have them. Yeah, definitely I'm gonna add a, a half an inch to this pocket directions. It's a little narrow, okay. Try to trim these little tails as you go along because if they get caught in the seam, they're much harder to trim. Oh, I forgot to mention what I did with this um, vinyl because it's um, so thick, I didn't double it over. I left it as one layer, but I top stitched, I folded under a half inch and top stitched on my machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can bypass the top stitching and use um, permanent double stick tape or glue to hold that under, or you can leave it raw edged if it's a nice thick um, vinyl like this one. I just don't really like the raw edge on the top. All right. It's 12.45. All right, now we're gonna run the tack down. You hear that sound? That's the thickness of the needle trying to get through all these layers. If you are using a, anything under a 9014 needle with all this vinyl, you would probably be breaking needles. And this needle is actually due to be changed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just like before, we're gonna remove the tape. Okay, and we're gonna fold this back gingerly, not really tightly. Tape it down. I can pull this piece up now. Oops. And then run the top stitch. We don't have that many more steps. And I, oops, I'm going to have to remember I forgot to um, add my stopping stitch to this file. Wait, I'm, I got to stop this. I was getting ready to put my fingers in there. Don't ever do that because this came loose and I could have taken my finger with a needle through it. Don't ever do that. Okay, now we're gonna be ready to um, run the placement for our hardware or D-ring straps or whatever you're gonna be using. In my case, I'm using those straps I showed you earlier. So I believe this is a one inch strap, but if your hardware straps, whatever you're using are wider or more narrow, then use, just center it over the, the line, okay? So let's take this tape off. All right, now here's where we get to the, to the important information, like I said earlier. So one thing is these actually have a very slight curve to them. That's the top. So you need to make sure you put that down so that when you it gets stitched in and folded back, it's facing the right area. So again, we need to make sure that presser foot is gonna be able to get through here. Um, if you refer back to your original die line, it's slightly inside here is the final out billing. So I'm gonna leave extra because I want a little bit of wiggle room. I don't want this hoop right on the edge of my bag. So I'm gonna overlap this uh, about a quarter of an inch. And I'm actually gonna get my ruler, um, maybe, what did I do with the ruler? And measure, because I want them to be equal. How did I just sense it? Here it is. I want it to be equal on both sides. So I can usually eyeball it. I'm very good. I think I'm gonna do 3 eighths of an inch, actually. Yeah, so I can eyeball it. So again, I have it facing, right side facing down, and you need a big piece of vinyl to go over the, or tape, because we do not want the presser foot to get hung up on this um, vinyl. So I'm not gonna trim my zipper because I want that to get cut, to stay inside and um, be more secure that way. So we're gonna now play, run the um, tack down. 
which is a bean and then a zigzag because unlike cotton this this stuff can tear away easily and we don't want that to happen so i'm putting in um and remember it's gonna get oops see i needed to do that i it got would have hung up on there it almost did um, so I had to reach back and lift it up higher. There's going to be two more stitch or one more stitch around here. Um, so if you don't think this is secure, back it up and do that step again. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run our placement for that side. So you can see better how that looks. And so now we have our placement for that side. Likewise, where'd it go? Remember, we want our our right side facing down. And I'm gonna pull this tape off and use it again. And I'm gonna get my ruler here because I wanted this to be three eighths inch past that line. That's a quarter. That's three eighths. And then I'm gonna put the big piece of tape back on here. Press against a firm surface. And I'm gonna be very careful when this finishes. As soon as I hear that thread cutting, I'm gonna lift up that foot so it doesn't um, hang up on anything. Awkward. Look at this hoop is so big. See, now I don't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna remove this tape. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and add our front exterior and tack that down. Before I do that, I'm gonna flip the hoop over and I'm gonna lift up. First, I'm gonna cut out this um, stabilizer. Where's my steam rubber? Now's a good time to do that. So what I like to do is I just get underneath up here and get the stabilizer started. Don't, don't rip into your zipper. I think I almost just did. And then I like to just slice it down the side of the bag. So you can see the blade of the seam ripper underneath, or you can use scissors and then just slice it down. I keep the ball on top, but I don't know if it really matters to be honest. Let's see if it'll work if we have the ball on the bottom. Sometimes you have to use your regular scissors or just tear it to get it started but it cleans, it comes off much more cleanly if you use the seam ripper, even the tear away. Can you see what I'm doing there? Yes, you can. So just carefully cut it down. Make sure as you go along that you're not hitting the, the zipper or the fabric. It's just easier to do it now while it's in the hoop because the hoop gives you some tautness. I learned that from my friend Ricky at String Theory Fabric Art. If you have not checked out her group, it's her work is amazing. Go check her out. And now, um, let's see, is it tearing off? Yeah, it's tearing off now. Okay, now very carefully, because I, you're not gonna do this, but because I messed up and did tear away, I'm gonna lift up my lining and cut out the, tear away underneath it because we're going to be stitching down our exterior now. Oops, and see I um, it's going to be hard now. I should have done it a few steps ago, but that's okay because um, I did those tack downs already for the I'm reaching my finger under here because I don't want to cut my exterior. 
I did the tack downs for the tabs, so now it's gonna be a little harder to do it. But that's okay, you can reach in and get it out. Tear out as much of it as you can without unhooping it. Be very careful so you don't unhoop it. I just don't want that crunchy feeling in my bag. And it will tear pretty well along that zipper line. And since this hoop is so large, we're only doing a six by 10, but this is a seven by 11 hoop. It's got enough left over that you don't have to worry about it too much. Just be careful with those placement stitches because you don't want to pull anything out. There we go. So I got it all out and I'm gonna tape this back down because if you don't, it can get um, pushed up from the presser foot as you're moving along. I wonder if my um, furnace, I already replaced the furnace filter. I'm wondering if we need our furnace ducts cleaned because I keep smelling cigarette smoke and we don't smoke. I don't know what my neighbors do though, so I don't know if it's somehow coming in. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and put down our exterior panel. This is where it starts to get really thick. So if you need to peek under here or under here to make sure where that you're lining it up well, where the seam is at and then center it over here. And you see how these are so bulky. Can you, well, I don't know if you can see. Oh, and you have, this is flipped the wrong way. Definitely make sure this is flipped in, but see how bulky they are. So that's gonna make um, a little bit of a puffiness as we stitch around this, but that's okay. So I'm lining this up and I'm gonna check here. Yep, it's plenty. And now I'm going to tape it down. And you can reuse this tape that's on the bottom, actually. I'm going to tape all the corners down. Right now, I'm just going to, it's just going to tape along here. And um, then we'll put our lining on and it'll do the rest of it. And remember, we're going through a lot of layers right now. a little bit of a curve to this bag. Great. All right. Now this is going to be our last step, but I'm going to be very careful when it ends because I forgot to put the stop step. Make sure one more time that these are definitely inside and tucked in. Get your tape and tape this down really well. I'll pull it tautly and tape it down all the way around the bag because that bulk from those um, plastic um, connectors is gonna push up on your exterior and it's gonna make it harder for the machine not to make it puffy. How do I keep dropping my big roll of tape, guys? Oh, here it is. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna add the lining to the back. And I'm not gonna worry about this top. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll tear that out. It's only a small piece. It should tear out very easily. All right. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and tear that out because it's should be very easy. This is our last step. It's just a small amount. Again, you're gonna be using poly mesh. Um, I recommend poly mesh or soft tear away. Like Madeira has one that's really soft. And um, there's a Pelon 360, which is tends to be soft and um, use that so you don't have to worry about cutting away your stabilizer. I'm watching to make sure I don't cut into my vinyl underneath that I just taped down. All right, I can pull this off at the zipper. So it's not the end of the world. Remember right, that placement, if I don't cut that, it could tear out my stitches. I don't lean it against the bottom like I just did. So tear that, um, cut that placement out. All right, 
right, fold that back down, nice and taut. All right, now we're gonna lay our final lining down. And just like you did the front, go ahead. You see here's the bottom, so you can use that as a marker here. You need your um, seam allowance to go about a half an inch to an inch beyond that. So if you peel this back, there's the top where we're gonna stitch, so I don't have it even. So yes, I'm gonna add a half an inch dimensions to each of these. So that's gonna be, it's okay, that's okay. Yep, that's good. And then we're gonna tape this down. I'm gonna tape all these corners down because they like to come loose when it's stitching. It's funny, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, a long time, I've been out here for a year or whatever, but I, my very first bag that I still have not released because somebody copied the general design and concept and I got really upset, so I still haven't released it. But anyway, um, I actually did it this way where I stitched it here and then only the exteriors together in that area at the opening and then added the lining and did the rest of it. But somehow over time, I had started to do it the way other digitizers do it. And I'm like, why did I start doing it that way? And what happens is it ends up being that you're stitching um, across the bag so many times and that's not good for vinyl. It can actually perforate the vinyl. So I'm being very careful here and it's getting puffy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tape up and it kind of, it kind of I had it not against the stabilizer. So I'm gonna pull it up to try and eliminate that ball. All right. Keep your fingers out of the work area. Now this is actually on the back of your bag, so it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right now and make sure from these vibrations that it did not make this thing come loose and it didn't. But it's not the end of the world if it's a little puffy. Oops, see, I didn't have it taped down good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up um, a few steps. If you cannot back up, then um, it's okay. Oops. Because it's gonna come back over it. But I'm gonna pull those stitches out real quick and hopefully it won't show. and fix this and tape it down better because I don't want that bulk. I mean, again, it's on the back of it, so it's probably fine, but I'd prefer not to have it look messy. So I'm just pulling these stitches out real quick. And I'm gonna tape this down better. And it was It was fine right there. All right, so use a lot of tape when you're doing this because there's a lot of bulk in here from the that hardware. Right. I'm gonna tape this so it hits all the layers. This, this, the bottom, this, and that. And this one was okay. And this vinyl actually does have a little bit of give to it. A little bit of stretch is what I mean. I didn't realize that. Okay, let's try this again. See, don't panic when something looks like it's going wrong. Just calmly stop your machine. When you see it going a little bit wonky, stop the machine, back up, and start it again. Oh, uh, that's much better. And again, it's gonna be a little bit bulgy because of that hardware pushing it up. I know I've said that a whole bunch of times, but it is going to get come down here and I'm going to get ready to press stop because I don't have my um, stopper in it. So as soon as I see that overlap, okay, so there's enough overlap. Oh, let me cut the scissors, but you'll have another step here. So there's going to be 19 colors and I forgot to mention at the beginning, always make sure you check, make sure you're what shows on your machine is the same. Before we unhoop this, we wanna turn it over and make sure that our back stitched out nicely, and it did, and then we can go ahead and unhoop it. So I'm gonna return my hoop on my machine, 
I can pull this out of the way so it's out of my workway. Oops, tape fell in there. And now it's time to remove the tape. And this fuzzy material here, I find you can't use the tape, reuse the tape very much after using this vinyl. So I'm just gonna throw this away. But when you can salvage it, salvage it. We are gonna have tacos tonight. Well, Grayson's gonna, I might have one tortilla. I have some low carb tortillas. And then I'll probably have a salad. It's been so long since I've really done any cooking. So we're trying to turn over a new leaf. Um, it's been so bad the last year or two. I've been under so much stress because of stuff that we've been eating mostly just takeaway, which is so easy when it's just the two of us. But what's so bad is that my son no longer has any memory of my cooking. It's like, oh, we gotta stop that. We gotta stop that. He asked me if he, if he likes meatloaf one day. I'm like, yes, you like meatloaf. So we are gonna have meatloaf. Actually, I think we might do meatloaf tonight. Okay. I got him some sweet potato tots from, what is that brand? Oh, I can't remember now, but he, man, he loved those when he was a child. And it's been years since I've got them because um, we don't have a lot of room in our freezer. And he really loves when I just roast the sweet potatoes. So that's usually what I do. But I happen to see them come up on my Kroger shopping list. So I said, let's get them. Okay, there we go. All the tape is removed. Now we're going to see if this bag worked to the what we planned on. Hey, Grayson, can you please bring Mommy that um, old iPhone? Let's move our hoops out of the way. Now the rest of our tearaway should come off really easy since we pulled it loose inside. I think I got all the tape. But yeah, just get rid of this tearaway. This brand is not a very good brand, so I'm just pitching it. But normally when I'm like using the 806 or whatever from Pellon, I save these big remnants to use to back up um, stitching when you're doing a heavy dent stitching. Okay, my son did not hear me. Okay, so um, over here right away, I wanna make sure you don't cut off the zipper all the way even flush. You wanna leave a little bit extra zipper. And the same with our tabs, we are not gonna cut our extra propylene. You need to leave those um, long as they are. So the first thing we're gonna cut into is um, our turning hole. You'll notice that um, right here's our turning hole. And I'm gonna cut an angle here um, so that we have a little bit more material to um, work with when we turn and close that. It's a sewing trick that I learned on a sewing YouTube and I was like, oh, that's such a clever idea. I need to work that into my bags. And I do remember learning this in home ec a long time ago, but I'd forgotten. So see what I did there? And I'll, I'll cut away the rest of the bulk. But I always do it on the back first because with the bobbin thread, it's kind of hard to see where to cut. So then I can come over here and cut it. Now normally with um, vinyl, I like to cut a 1 8 inch seam allowance, but since we're working with cotton here too, I don't want an eighth of an inch. That's too short for cotton, in my opinion. So I'm gonna leave that a quarter inch um, and then I'm just gonna notch this. So I'm gonna work around this and I'm gonna come back and visit that in a minute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come around to the other side. So I'm bypassing that little um, flap. And I'm going to come around here and you'll see I have a little dip up there. So I'll show you what to do for that in a second. And some of these pieces um, of vinyl might be big enough to um, do the, um, do s some scraps with. So don't throw those away. All right, I'm getting to the zipper now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so I don't cut through the zipper. And very carefully cut through right there. I don't want to cut through the zipper tape. So this is just on the vinyl right now, so I can actually cut it at that 1 8 inch. I'm going to have to come around here like this. And I'll trim that zipper later. So it helps if you can pull the zipper away from your cutting, but because of um, I had it kind of wonky there. What is going on here? I'm gonna to have to trim out the back separately. That's okay. 
and I'm going to trim the, the zipper a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and bypass that again because we need to um, make sure we don't cut off the, the strap. And we're going to come back around here to our little tab. So I'm going to come back over here now and fix this where I messed up. All right, now how much do I want to leave of the, the zipper? Um, not a whole lot, like a, about a quarter inch to a half an inch. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and fix this. I messed this up. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to trim out this extra material here. So but we don't want to trim this. So if you go ahead and fold this back, then you can trim this here. See? And then the same thing over here, fold that back. Now over here we have the cotton, so we're gonna leave a little bit longer on the cotton. And you can grade that vinyl underneath if you want, pull this cotton out, but it's pretty tight there. And then I'm gonna come back over here and fix this a little bit. Now this is gonna be awkward because we do have the zipper in there, so we are actually gonna to have to cut into the zipper a little bit, which I don't like to do, but it's for the shape that mom, or mom, I said mom, it's the shape I want. So again, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. We're gonna fold this back and um, trim off. This one's actually pretty good already, but we can trim a little bit more. Leave this here and then flip it around and trim. All right, and we're not leaving that off. You can go ahead and trim off these corners. And I'm honestly not sure if this is even gonna cut out, turn out nicely, because I have a lot of curves in here. <laughs> so um, our tab over here, we only need the lining to be that wide so you can go ahead and cut out the rest of this and our lining actually only needs to be about a half inch so you can go ahead and cut that extra piece off okay and over here go ahead and cut those corners make sure you're not cutting into your zipper I mean your strap okay this is going to be a little bit awkward right here but i don't want to trim it too much because that zipper's there trim it just a little bit okay so now what we want to do is we have a lot of curves here we have a little curve inlet here 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 all over so i'm going to grab my other let's see some of these pieces are big enough to save I'm going to grab my other um, scissors that I use for notching. I like these scissors here. These are Westcoffs. They're really good for notching. So first I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come in at a 45 degree angle each side. It's actually more like 30 degrees and it's not easy, but trim out that balk. And get that bulk out of there. And you can turn it around like that. However you have to do it. Same thing over here. <coughs> Just try and get some of the bulk out of there. And be careful over here because we do have zipper tape. And you can actually come in here with that um, lighter and trim that off. So then around these little notches, go ahead and notch it. Like every quarter inch or so. This is the difference in having a nice curve or not. If you just cut it really short, you're compromising your, your lining. 
but if you go ahead and just notch it, it doesn't compromise the lining as much, but it allows it to lay flatter. Now here we have a very gradual curve, so I'm still gonna go ahead and notch it. When you notch it on these kind of curves, it helps that material spread out inside. So just notch around. Oh wow, it's already 114. You know, I always think these videos won't take as long as they do. I don't know why. Okay, over here we're at the same predicament. We have to get in here and cut out that little notch. So I'm actually gonna just curve it out and just curve around and just reduce some of the buck a little bit. I'm not overly worried about it if it's not perfect. I'm getting stuff in my laptop. This one I trimmed pretty good, so I don't think I have to notch much out. And then these here corners, you definitely need to notch those. And I try, I'm sitting here because I don't have a good, like I can't get up and go to another area, but it's probably best not to do this on top of your sewing machine because those little bits can get all over. So I'm trying to be careful not to have that happen. Now it looks like they're not coming out, but they are. I'll just pull them out a little bit in a minute. Okay, so there we go. So now you have all your notches. There you go. All right, now have the fun part. Let's turn this out and see if it works great. Hey, Grayson, sorry. Can you bring me that other iPhone, please? All right, so I'm re reaching inside. I'm going to grab out this corner and start to turn it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is about the same size as the, the newest one, so um, they're slightly thicker. So we're going to test and see if it fits. And then just work it out through the hole. I tried to leave a nice big turning hole. I do not close my turning hole until I've got the bag entirely right side out and make sure everything looks right and that I didn't lose tear anything loose and I'm getting ready to tear this stitching right here I need to be careful and partly because I didn't finish that back stitch because I was afraid the machine would get stuck so just gingerly work it out I was supposed to tell you something oh we forgot I forgot to tell you when you add the exterior front panel, if you wanted the pocket on the back, that's where you would have added it. You would have laid it out just like I um, did the first time, but you would have done it before you taped down the exterior and it would have got tacked in with the exterior. In that case, and it's noted in the instructions, if you want it to go the full width, you need to make sure it's the full width, the cutting piece is the full width. And this is from my um, top stitching. Okay, so there we go, we got most of it out. Now we're gonna go ahead and push the lining. It's probably not, ideally I like to have my lining out a little bit better, but it's probably not gonna come all the way out because I have those heavy clasps in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it out this far and then I'll just open the zipper up. Remember I had that tape, so I'll remove that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish opening the zipper and then I'll turn it right side out because we don't really need to worry about getting this whole lining tucked out because that's where the tab is at. All right, see that? Now push it through. Oh, please let it fit this foam because six by 10, most people have, a lot of people have a six by 10 hoop and don't have the next larger size. So now you can use this to help you pull it and then you'll reach inside and push that tab open with your finger. And these hemostats come in really handy for this the rounded ones, you can get in there and help push the corners out. Gingerly, again, some vinyls will tear if you do this. Okay, I'm liking the way this is looking. Come over here. All right, I do have one little mistake there. The pocket didn't catch all the way on that side, so I will need to make sure the pocket directions Thankfully that's vinyl. I'll widen those pocket 
um, and lengthen it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and push this all the way out and then you can use the hemostats to rub along that seam or your fingers inside. But actually, it's, it's actually okay, I think. All right, and then we have to push this one out. See, we don't want it like that. It's gotta get pushed out, just like over here. So let's go ahead and pull it. And that actually helped that pocket lay down just right. It does need a tiny little bit, but it's pretty okay. Now I have to make the other strap to go around the waist. I think I have enough fabric up, or enough this strapping to do it, because gosh knows the color won't be the same. There we go. And now up here, reach in and push those corner those curves out. And the same thing, use your fingers and then come in with the hemostats because we have that gentle curve up there um, for decoration. And so you don't wanna have done all that work and not have it showing. All right, so you see how this wants to pucker in down here. Keep rubbing along here. And then what you can do is rub it between your fingers. And when you have it as where you like it, you can put some clips on it to hold it in place. And um, the, they will leave a little bit of imprint, but you don't have to leave them that long. And the imprint will come down. Or you can put a heavy book on top of it, and it'll help take the puffiness away. Now let's see if it fits our big phone. It does. Oh my gosh, how adorable is that? So we can go ahead and zip it closed. We have a nice big bag zipper. This corner needs maybe just a little bit more rubbing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. I've had this on my list, my embroidery design bucket list for a long time. And I've had several versions I've started actually, but this one just hit me last night and it's like, I'm gonna go with it. I just started, started at it and the shape came as I was doing it. So what I'm doing is if I rub it along here, then it'll glide it out. Well, this is a beautiful shape. So you can put your keys or some change there. Um, if you wanted, you could have put the pocket on the back, but this is what I was talking about. And see on the back, it doesn't look quite as nice because it's hard to get that little corner out. It's hitting, it's the back of your bag. So who cares about that, right? And when you lay this down and flatten it with something, that will actually, um, smooth out as well so that's about um probably about as best as you're going to get unless you flatten it even in the video i can see the colors changing so here you go there's your phone you'll put your um wrap around it and um have a nice bag okay i hope you guys have liked this video if you like my channel and my designs, please subscribe. Um, once I get to a thousand subscribers, I can start doing YouTube live videos, which would be nice. Um, and if go ahead and like, if you hit the little bell down there, it will let you give notifications whenever I have a new video. Thanks everybody, have a good day.